Hello, my name is Ejeta Makran. I am the author of How to Lose a Country, and I try to um, lay out the seven common patterns of global rising right-wing populism. Um, I am from Turkey, and we have experienced the most devastating form of right-wing populism, as you might have already noticed. Uh, but this book is not about Turkey at all. It's about the entire world and probably about your country too. I noticed seven common patterns within all these countries that have been subjected to rising right-wing populism and I wrote about them. It's a book um, that tells stories of people, stories of me, and also there's some theoretical parts in the book. I'm here in Waterstones, Piccadilly, and I want to share three books that are very special to me today. Uh, one of them is uh, Clarice Lispector, Near to the Wild Heart. Uh, Clarice Lispector is a Brazilian writer, and she is, in fact, known to be the Brazilian Virginia Woolf. Um, she's an amazingly beautiful woman, and in fact, she acted in movies as well, but also an amazing, amazing author. She does hardcore literature, so it's not a page turner, the books that she, have, uh, she has written. Um, she's also a special writer to me because this is one of the writers I share with my very, very close friend, Annalise Beck, who's also a novelist. Uh, so whenever I get really tired of life, let's say, and the banality of in general, I just open a page and read few sentences uh, to remind myself where I actually belong to literature. And the second one is another fiction writer that I not only as a writer but also a po political figure adore, <laughs> let's say. Orondothy Roy um, wrote The God of Small Things years and years ago and she wrote this one novel and she got, she got the Man Booker Award as you already know. Orondoti Roy is a political figure and I, you know, admire her for being so local about several political issues that have, that we have been grappling with lately. Um, she lately wrote a more political uh, novel called Ministry of, of Utmost Happiness and she has been criticized uh, after this novel for her new novel and I find it quite unfair because she tries to put all those uh, you know impossible to untangle uh, issues into literature and that is an amazing amazing um, effort I think I met her once years ago during the Iraq International Tribunal uh, I was a journalist and she was there in the tribunal and while we have, were ha, inter, while I was interviewing her, she called me. Oh, you are the girl with the big eyes. So I hope she reminds, she remembers me still. I can never forget her. Here's a book from Hannah Arendt. Uh, she's now famous all of a sudden because of the political turmoil uh, that all of us are going through. Uh, she was not so popular a few years back, but now she's on the bestseller list. This is one of her books, Ahman, Ahman in Jerusalem, a report on the banality of evil. Uh, for anyone writing on today's political issues, Hannah Arendt is a must read, obviously. But especially this book uh, might be very inspiring for those people who are uh, fed up with banality of evil, ordinariness of evil. Uh, in my book uh, that's going to be out in February, I wrote that uh, the term banality of evil should be reversed, in fact, to become evil of banality. And that's another long subject, but Hannah Arendt is not only important politically and philosophically, also she's important to me personally because of um, the subject of forgiveness. Hannah Arendt was a student, also a lover of uh, Heidegger when she, was a, you know, when she was taking lessons from her. But Heidegger, as you might have uh, n you know, learned already, uh, was a Nazi uh, for a good part of his life. So Hannah Arendt was a Jew, she had to run away, 
uh, from Germany to the United States. And then for 30 years, she thought if she can forgive Heidegger. And 30 years later, she went back to Germany. She felt completely alien. And we don't really know if she really forgave Heidegger or not. That has always been a curious question for me.